and welcome to 101 Ideas for Minecraft Learners. In this episode, we're going to be making, well, I'm sure you could see it. There's a giant Chinese dragon behind me and uh, we're going to be I'm going to be showing you how I made this. So let's uh, without further ado, let's fly up right in the middle on this and I'm going to uh, go into this mode as well. I've got my elytra wings on as well. I'm going to just fly over there. I'm going to fly <laughs> just fly up the top and we'll take a closer look at this giant sculpture. Now it looks pretty impressive, I have to admit. Uh, so let's go down and fly. That's it. We're flying. Let's fly through his mouth. Uh, this is pretty cool. Way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 smacked into him. Let's fly around the body and down through this bit as well. <laughs> this is like pretty cool actually uh, to make a kind of elytra uh, kind of art thing. So this Chinese dragon actually uh, started life in a museum and actually as a as a real life object and then it was it was actually uh, scanned uh, by an artist called Oliver Larrick and Oliver Larrick's work is being shown uh, at the Liverpool Biennial at the moment uh, in Liverpool <laughs> funnily enough and uh, I've been doing a project uh, regarding his work and some more also other people's work uh, who are exhibiting their work uh, digitally at Liverpool Biennial um, so one of the things that we were asked to do was to c c put some of the work, uh, Oliver Larrick's work and so on, into uh, Minecraft and to create an interactive Minecraft thing. So that's what we did. And this has been part of the result. So what I want to do today is I want to show you the technique that I used to take a scan, a downloadable scan, an OBJ file, and actually turn it into a voxel shape and then to put that voxel shape into Minecraft. We kind of do the end bit is, is reasonably easy because it's basically a schematic, but we're going to be using a little bit of a new software. So it's a new software um, uh, kind of demonstration, and that new software is called Cubicle. You have to buy it, unfortunately, and uh, the, uh, the the voxelizer is also a, a, a DLC, I know. So there you go, bit of a pain, but the <laughs> but it creates amazing results, right? Amazing results, and also all of the objects that I'm going to be creating today, uh, I will uh, offer up uh, for you, uh, so you can actually, you know, if, even if you haven't got these things, you and you want a giant Chinese dragon in your world, you will be able to have it. I'm going to basically put all the schematics I've created uh, into the description below, so you can download them for yourself if you want to. And then if you've got uh, uh, some money, then you can buy a cubicle and you can have a little play around with it at the same time. I kind of use it because obviously I've got it does it is basically a 3D voxelizer program. But let, let's not stop talking about it. Let's show you what I'm going to be doing. So let's nip over into cubicle and show you what that what this is all about. Cubicle is for sale. I'm going to put a link uh, for the website in the description below, but also you can get it through Steam. So here it is in Steam. You can kind of see what it says. Cubicle Voxel Editor enables you to easily design charming 3D models with a unique blocky style. And it gives you a range of tools to do so as well. If we can have a look through these quickly pictures. Pretty cool tools actually, to be honest with you. And it was uh, one of the reasons why I was so attracted to it. Order 3D prints online. You can create your own merchandise. Uh, you can share models online as well with a Sketchfab account, so it does Sketchfab things as well. Get more features like landscape generation, voxelization, and mesh export available as DLC, as I, as I mentioned before. So go along to the website if you're interested. Uh, there it is. It's £14.99, but, and here's the thing, but there, these are the modules. So I bought... I think it was a sale on, and I bought all these modules, not for that much money. I, 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 I mean, I'm still got a bundle, but there's a bundle over there. But anyway, I haven't got, I didn't get the commercial license because I'm not using it commercially. I'm using it uh, to, uh, educationally and to, to create kind of fun little maps and stuff like that. So none of this stuff, I'm not making, you can kind of, um, you know, it, it's uh, oh, horrifically expensive if you, get, if you get all them. But anyway. There you go. Uh, that's that's something. There are other voxel editors out there as well uh, that you might be able to be interested in. But today I'm just showing you this one because I think it's quite interesting. So let's open it up and show you how it works. This is what Cubicle looks like when you first load it up. Uh, you've got this little deer on the right hand side. You, all your projects are down here if you want to. 
and you can create a new model by hitting this friendly plus button on the right hand side. You arrive into uh, something that looks reasonably familiar for those people who've kind of created things in 3D. Uh, you can right click and move uh, around this 3D shape here. Uh, we've got file, edit, edit, create, transform, modify, and we've got kind of create, you know, we can create boxes and spheres and even a terrain actually. The terrain is pretty cool and uh, things like create a torus. Then we can also create uh, and draw our own kind of uh, pixels and shapes in there with a color palette down the bottom. We've got lots of different swatches that are available to us. It's pretty familiar and there are quite a few tutorials online that will show you how this kind of stuff works. The thing that I want to do today is basically show you the voxelizing uh, technique that I've been using to transfor transform large uh, OBJ files into uh, Cubicle and then export them as schematics so we can import them into uh, MC Edit and therefore into Minecraft itself. So I'm going to go to Voxelizer here uh, and uh, press Create Voxel voxelizer so that I press ok and what that does is it puts a little kind of weird V cube in the middle that's like an empty voxelizer that's a kind of more of a function than anything else so it's just there waiting for me to do something with it what you need to do is you need to load a voxelizer mesh uh, so I'm going to click this and uh, in my downloads I downloaded this Dragon OBJ. Now I'll show you where I downloaded that in just a moment and pretty much any kind of OBJ will do. Although with really huge files uh, it does sometimes have a bit of a mare. <laughs> it just has a bit of a nightmare uh, figuring out what on earth is going on. But you, it can do it. It just depends on the power of your computer. I'm going to click this one and press open. Now, it's having a think about it, so it's just sort of going, uh, well, wait a sec, hang on a sec. So what it's doing is kind of, it's voxelizing that entire shape. And any minute now, it should appear in front of our very eyes. Okay, there it is. There it's done itself there. And I can move around. And I can see that, well, unfortunately, our, our dragon is on its side, uh, which is not the way I want it to, to, to be. It's not the way I want it to be. So let's have, if we have a look at this, I'm going to click hold of it again. And what we can see is we've got uh, our, our, our X, our Y, and our Z, and Y up down. So we've got the red, the green, and the blue. What I need to do is I need to t rotate it on the red, which is the X value. So if we go over here, we can kind of see some information about our voxelized shape. If I click out of it, that sort of disappears. So you've got to click it, make sure it's selected. It's got that orange uh, yellow box around it. And we can see we've got the name, the type. Now you can kind of name it dragon and stuff like that if you want more than one thing here. The size of it. So currently it's 192 blocks by 84 by 133. Where there's its position and it's got a pivot as well so it can pivot around and mesh rotate. So we want to actually rotate the mesh. Uh, so let's do this then, shall we? So we can rotate it around the X, the Y and the Z. So we're going to rotate it around the X. And I think in the past, if I kind of, uh, I think it's going to be like 270. So it's going to kind of be the opposite way around. We, we can press preview or press OK. I'm going to press OK. It's going to have a pause again for a little bit because basically it's kind of rotating the mesh and then revoxelizing the mesh. So it has to go through that kind of whole process again. So you leave it to do its, all the mathematics inside of itself. <gasps> Take a deep breath. Go make yourself a cup of tea. Have a cup of tea. Come back. It should be done. There we go. Okay, there we go. That's perfect. So now it's it's exactly in the position I want it to be. Now, if you think to yourself, my goodness me, that is too large. I'm zooming in, rolling with the back of my the, the mouse roller on the back to kind of zoom in and out. It looks pretty cool. It, it's the, the it's fide the fidelity of it is amazing. But I think to myself, no, it's a bit too big. So let's 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 cut it down in scale. Let's do it for fifty percent. Zero point five. Okay. Press tab and it puts the scale in 0 0.5 for everything. Press OK for that. And we can have a smaller version. You can actually take these things very, very small indeed. And it keeps, uh, it, what it does is it re, uh, rescales the mesh and then revoxelizes it. So there we go. We've got a tiny little one now, which is pretty cool. Uh, I can kind of drag it into, into position, but that really doesn't do anything at all, really, for what I want to do it anyway. So once we've got the thing that we want in the size that we want it, we can go to back to file up here. And we've got lots of different ways of exporting it. We can export it as an, an FBX, as a wave from OBJ, and all that kind of cubey goodness, as a, uh, as a collider. 
uh, as an STL. We can 3D print this thing out if we wanted to. Uh, cubicle binary, uh, that's kind of a native thing, cubicle binary tree. But what we want right at the end, oh, there's a vox lab, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, we could share on Sketchfab, which might be fun, but we could paint it up as well, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna save it as a Minecraft schematic. Now currently, it's color system is meaningless. There are some Minecraft colors down here, and I'll probably do another uh, tutorial using Cubicle to explain some of these things. All we're going to do is do it in one single color. At the moment, that will be uh, that will be um, uh, dragon. Let me just spell this by. That will be stone. Okay, so it's a base color, stone. Uh, dragon two or dragon small, small. Okay because that's what it is, small dragon. I've obviously done one before uh, to have it into my world that I showed you right at the beginning. So I'm gonna press save on that. And there we go, it's as simple as that. Uh, other things you can do is obviously we, you can experiment. So let's have a closer look at this and you can kind of see some of the cubes in there. It looks pretty good, I think. Uh, and it's one of my favorite kind of voxelizers. It's quite friendly and also it means I can paint it. So we've got down here, we've got a swatch set, which is hardened clay, you can kind of see uh, light blue and everything like that. So we can actually use these colors and when we export it as a schematic, those colors transfer across. But I'm gonna do that as another day. Another day, wait for that other day. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this into MC Edit and import it into Minecraft itself. So let me just show you that again. I know you've probably seen it before, but I think it's always useful to go back through these things. So here we are in MC Edit, uh, and it's the last place that I uh, I was standing. So I'm gonna move over here. You can see uh, the beautiful giant Chinese dragon there. And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna import the new one. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna find out where we put it. I think it was in Downloads. Um, Dragon, is it in there? There we go. So dragon small, and we're going to press open. So there's our small dragon, and you can see it's about 50% of the size of the original one. I'm going to just uh, press nudge and shift down, so just to embed it a little bit into the landscape here, just to make sure. Uh, he might be a little bit, and he needs to kind of come down a little bit more. So press nudge, press shift down, and embed it a little bit down. So it's actually nestling inside. Uh, beyond the trees and stuff like that. I'm gonna push it forward a bit as well. So nudge it forward, uh, maybe do like that. So it's almost like, yeah, that's, that looks pretty good. Over the top of this thing here. And then press import like this. Okay, so that's gonna import it. Uh, and while it's still selected, I'm gonna change its uh, color. So we can kind of do uh, fill and replace, which is down here. So we're gonna look for the stone, because it's made of stone. And I'm gonna replace the stone with what we could do, kind of polish and a site, which might, oh, polish diorite, I think, which might be quite nice, and replace it like that. Uh, save the whole thing afterwards. So you can either go to menu and save. That saves the entire world as, it's, as it should be. Uh, then, you know, quit. And let's go into Minecraft and take a look. So here we are in Minecraft, and we can see we've got our two dragons there, the really big one, the original size one, and the smaller one uh, in a little bit different. The, the original size one was done in a uh, quartz block, and we can see this is the andesite one. We can see the kind of, if we if I move away a little bit, oops, a daisy, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the way I did it. Now, that's actually a good uh, pulling back now. You can kind of see the two, uh, how each one, uh, the smaller one actually looks looks pretty good, doesn't it? Um, not too big, not too small. Pretty good to kind of, uh, you know, develop on top of. And of course, you've got a whole range of different uh, choices um, to kind of create these things for yourself. So let's now go and show you the website that I got some of these things from. And then you can kind of think, well, I might try this myself. Or you might have other places where you can get OBJ files. It works really well with OBJ files. Um, and you can kind of have a little play around with this for yourself. So let's go and have a look at the website. And I'll show you where I got all this lovely stuff from. So these are the 3D scans that I was talking about, and you can kind of see the, this right here is the Chinese dragon that uh, that I took. So if we click on this Chinese dragon here, we have a, a little preview of what the dragon looks like. 
uh, we can see that uh, it's been, uh, it's actually been, oh wow, look, <laughs> that, that's the 3D Dragon that I made. So uh, we can see that uh, some of this stuff, uh, as uh, other people have taken these, these dragons and stuff and redeveloped them, put them into different contexts. So if we go to the info here, we can see that all scans can be downloaded and used without copyright restrictions. And if you find them useful, please let contact 3scans.com know. The scans will be made possible with the general support of and I'm going to read them all out, but there you can go. They, there they all are. Um, so this is where they all come from. They all come from museums and stuff like that. So let's go back to some of the 3D scans and have a look at some of the kind of gorgeous things that we've got going on here. So we've got, like, oh, that looks like a sort of death mask. Look at these kind of... Uh, uh, these kind of ancient objects as well, and some uh, some cool crabs. Oh, we've actually got a crab inside of uh, the one of our, our maps for Liverpool Bay. Anyway, there's a bear. Let's have a look at the bear. Now, some of the things you've got to look out for is uh, some of these are STL files. Okay, so if you just scroll over on the bottom s section here, it says 3D scans, the WordPress content uploads, and you can see it says .stl.zip. STLs aren't kind of very good for what we want, unless you can convert your STL from an STL file to an OBJ file. Um, but if you can get an OBJ file, let's have a look at this little, this kind of boy here. Uh, that's an STL as well. Uh, I wonder about this, uh, this little angel, this cherub here. Let's have a look at this STL as well. So I'm not having much luck here. Let's go and find, uh, let's go and find some of these things over here. So uh, STL zip as well. That's <laughs> the Sphinx. Amazing looking Sphinx. So maybe there's a way of uh, transferring these things. I mean, I remember I found uh, some objects. Maybe this uh, this Greek statue. Oh, it's bronze. Originally bronze. So there we go. That's an OBJ file. So we can kind of take a, a, a sculpture like this, a kind of a classic Greek kind of looking sculpture. Um, and uh, a Roman copy of the first century BC. So there you go. And you can see what other people have done with it down here. So I've done a range of different kind of things as well. Um, that is, that's about it. I hope this has been slightly interesting or slightly useful for you. Let's go back to 3D scans as well. So you can kind of see all the kind of other ones that are available here too. Uh, I think um, there are other places obviously where you can get OBJ files. Ah, look at these, this is cool, a little monkey as well, some sort of busts and heads. Uh, and maybe you can do, maybe you're a museum, or maybe you're kind of a different organisation that has got scanned objects, and you want to take those scanned objects and turn them into Minecraft to make some engaging content. Or you're a kind of a, a map maker, and you want to kind of take some things from the internet that you've seen that you thought were really cool, and you want to turn them into a map as well, and make something engaging for other people. This is one of the ways that you can do it. Uh, any questions about this, do leave them in the comment section below. I'll try and get back to you. Uh, I found this whole whole project quite fascinating and the kind of uh, and the way cubicle works and that as well pretty cool too so until next time thanks very much for watching and i'll see you all later bye